Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another session. As always, thank you so much for being here. Uh, we have such a great community, and yeah, I'll keep showing up as long as, long as I can uh, for this community. So uh, let's dive right in. Uh, so we're just going to, as always, if you've been here before, we're going to just cover a few really, really basic items before we dig in and, and dive into these questions that are coming up. So yesterday's video, um, you know, a lot of times, well, pretty much all the time with the, the original content videos, they're scripted. And so yesterday I kind of scripted a few, wrote out a few, but kind of decided at the end, like I was taking a combination of all those videos and just kind of saying, here are the seven tips that I just consistently see showing up time and time again with my clients and what's going on in the candidate space. So if you haven't had a chance to check out that video from yesterday, definitely check it out. Take a quick step back. My name is Jeff H. Seip. If it's your first time being here, the business is practiceinterviews.com. We do interview coaching, negotiation coaching, and our special offer today, 100 off of our interview mastery course by using the coupon code NICE, N-I-C-E, and you get $100 off today. That's just available till 11.59 p.m. Pacific time today. So let's dive in lots to talk about you know uh we really want to start to focus in here in q4 on thinking about how things are looking in, in q4 and then looking forward to the hiring trends that are going to be coming up in 2023 and i, I think we're going to see it be pretty slow here pretty slow into the q1 of next year and, and we'll talk through that today um you know i kind of on linkedin today i got to be honest I, I put these big companies on blast uh, if you're Google or Meta or Microsoft or Amazon, you're hiring less and the recruiter behavior and interviewer behavior is getting worse, not better. And so um, on LinkedIn, if you check out my LinkedIn post today uh, in the Slack group, we were able to validate that there is a workaround for Google recruiters that if you send an email to, to this specific email, um, I can't remember it offhand, um, it seems like it pokes them to get back in touch with you. So a really, really great data point. Uh, somebody in our Slack community um, tested it out and they heard back from the recruiter and they hadn't heard back in months. So this might be our workaround. We might have found the loophole, which would be an amazing, amazing data point. Um, if you haven't joined the Slack community, practiceinterviews.com, it's free. We have nine free resources on there. You know, 99.9% .9 of people get my content for free and that's what I want. I want it to be free. I want to be a free resource. I want to build this great community. We're three minutes in, so we're not gonna waste any more time. You know I love to dive in and get to the questions. Uh, no need to repeat questions. I will handle all questions in order. It is occasionally possible that I miss something. Please let me know. Um, but usually I'll, I'll hit everything. Uh, positivity, feedback, any input that you can help that will help the community overall. It's great. Um, I think that's it for now. Let's, let's go ahead and dive in. Hey Jeff, nice to see you. What is the difference between HM and team manager in Google or are all HMs automatically considered team managers? I believe that this is just nomenclature, right? Verbiage, uh, I believe they're one and the same. Uh, let's go to your second part. You applied for a role in London, but the hiring manager is in Amsterdam. Does that mean there will be a different team manager in London for me, or the hiring manager in Amsterdam will be managing the team from there. Yeah, it's definitely going to be the latter. The hiring manager is just located in Amsterdam and they have a dispersed team that could be just across Europe. It could be other parts of the world as well. I hope that helps. <sighs> okay. I came in and gave a salary expectation and email to my recruiter. This is after I confirmed level and passed the interview. Uh, the recruiter said they will take it to the comp team now. It's been three days. I asked the recruiter if there's an update. They said they're trying to get better numbers for comp to get closer to what I want. When they get back to me, should I negotiate uh, once more and just accept as this is likely their final offer? Also, do you know what I can expect? L4, Durham, North Carolina, GCP, cloud security engineer, not a suite. You anchored at 250. Um... Cloud security engineer, cloud security engineer. Yeah, I don't think that that's a, that's not a terrible anchor. Um, so uh, let's just see how it plays out. Uh, I don't think that that's a terrible anchor for your market. Um, 
cloud security engineers are not going to get paid as high as we. So I don't think that's too bad. I think you did okay. Um, it doesn't mean that you still can't negotiate. Even if they hit that number, you could say, oh, I was thinking about that number in terms of base and bonus, not equity. Or if they don't hit that number and say best and final, hey, if we can just get 5K more a year on the base or 20K more total in equity over four years, you know, so just always push. I'm a big fan of pushing. Remember, these last and final pushes, when anybody comes at these big tech companies and they say best and final, you know, 50, 60, 70 percent of the time we're getting more if we ask for a little bit more. It's in those final negotiations if you ask for a lot more that you won't get it. But a little more, oftentimes we will. Recruiter recently pushed for total comp expectation and I provided a range. He noted in the initial conversation. Now I feel that if I'm successful, they'll likely start from the lowest end of that range. How can I push for at least the middle? Should I go through the interview and during the offer stage, I can just mention that I'm anchoring for something at least in the middle of the range. Range is 240 to 280. I want at least 260. Um, anchoring with ranges doesn't work because if you anchor with a range, you're anchoring for the low number. Um, if they told you it would pay 240 to 280, or I, I'm, I don't have all the context, so maybe you can tell me a little bit more. At the end, when they like you and they want to hire you, you can simply say, I've done my research. I've spoken with current and former employees at the organization. I need to reset expectations, period. Um, you can always reset expectations. So don't worry about it too much now. Um, just go crush those interviews. Don't worry too much about the comp piece now. You'll get paid what you deserve as long as you negotiate well. Hi, Jeff. Are TSE Workspace L3 in India still being hired this year? Can't tell you. Um, everything is going to be on a case by case basis. I don't think they're going to say across the board, we need a hundred of X role. It's not happening. So I can't tell you. And we have a data point for Google, all those roles that were reprioritized. So they've confirmed that the reprioritized roles are like confirmed. Yes, we need this role, but now it needs to go through another loophole to actually get officially approved. So yeah, it's, it's pretty ridiculous. Um, Long story short, I got laid off a couple months ago and only got paid until 10-1. I mean, it's HC for my role, but can't go through HC because the role is still frozen. Recruiter says he anticipated no issue getting through HC when I can go through, but doesn't know when he'll be able to go through HC. However, since I'm no longer getting paid, I need to take another job in the meantime till they get everything figured out for the role. Should I tell my recruiter? That I'm going to take a new position in the meantime or not mention it because it takes me out of the process since I would be accepting a new position. Yeah, just don't tell them for now. Um, it's really irrelevant to them. And ultimately, at the end of the day, the only thing you'll want to tell them is when they decide to hire you, you say, hey, I want to just update my application in the background check. I've been with this other one company for a month. I had to take another job while I waited. Um, they can't, can't get mad at you for that. Uh, the process has been crazy with these hiring with this hiring freeze, and this isn't just them; it's across the board. So, um, yeah, really, don't don't worry too much about that. I would take that other job because who knows how long it will take. Many people say that now is not the time to change jobs, considering we might hit a recession come twenty twenty three. Given your experience, do you believe in last in, first out? Should there be mass layoffs? Um, uh, I wouldn't say that I believe in it. I would just say that it's a reality, right? First in, uh, last in, first out is just commonly what they do. They're not going to get rid of their most tenured employees. Um, so the first people coming in will be the first people who they kick out. So um, does it mean I don't think you should change jobs? No, I think everybody should just believe in themselves, change jobs and crush it so much, make yourself so indispensable that they can't get rid of you. But yeah, um, economic times will um, yield some interesting things. Like we're 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 in a really interesting spot here. I, I think if you read the news, look at the data, however you're getting the data from news outlets through social media. I mean, it's where we're headed is super interesting, and obviously there are just a ton of unknowns. Um, so yeah, if you want to play it safe, um, I'm always I'm always 
a bigger risk taker, but that's my personal strategy for life in the job market. So um, it really just depends on how risky you can be. And I think also this depends on your setup. Like, do you have a mortgage? Do you have children? These are all things that you need to factor in when making job changes um, because yeah, sometimes we need to be a little bit less risky when we have many other people counting on us. Uh, hey, Jeff, I did all three interviews for GCP program manager position in Argentina on August 16th, yet no response since then. Do you know if Google is taking a different hiring approach based on location? No, it's been pretty much across the board that it's been tough. Um, on LinkedIn, I'm really sorry, I'm forgetting that uh, email address. Actually, you know what? Sorry, I'm just going to go, I'm going to go get it for everybody um, so that we can just, we can just have it um, so I can state it because I, I, I don't know why my brain's not working, um, but I'm just going to go and get this information for you just so, just so we have it, just so the audience can see it. And I hate to jump off the thread, even though you can't see that I'm doing it. Um, let's see here. So the email is, let's see. Um, the email is candidate-interview-support at Google. Candidate-interview-support at Google. And apparently what this email does is, this is if you're not hearing back from your recruiter, email that. Uh, we had somebody in the Slack community test it. And what they found was that they heard back from their recruiter immediately. So it probably creates some sort of escalation, which is great that we have a workaround. It's amazing. Um, but in Argentina, it uh, it shouldn't be any different. I know the challenge, especially in Buenos Aires, which I believe is the market that you'd probably be hired for unless you're working remote. Um, I know there's some like the conversion rate and inflation, everything has made the salaries pretty tough there, but uh, that's my feedback. I hope it helps. Passed on sites a few months ago, but didn't get an offer. And then the hiring freeze started was laid off 30% of the company during this time and you took another role. Okay, recruiter is connecting me with roles and you have an upcoming call with the hiring manager. Uh, recruiter says I won't have to re-interview since old interviews will apply for a new role. Yep, and then it's a casual conversation for mutual fit. Is this a team match call? Um, yep, this is a team match call. Uh, excitement, enthusiasm. You are gonna have great answers to tell me about yourself, why Google, and you are going to ask great positive questions at the end. Those are the steps you're gonna take. This is definitely a team match call. Recruiter has also asked me to fill out an application for the role, which requires an updated resume role history. You recommended don't bring up layoffs, but since, yeah, include the new role. We are not, we can't just take a step back, uh, uh, we can't take a back seat. Is this, is this language right? Whatever I'm trying to get at, we can't stop our lives because Google goes through a hiring freeze. You need to move forward with your life. And if they're like, well, you're, you would leave this company? Well, this is a dream opportunity for me. Um, you know, I had to take another job to pay the bills, to put food on my table, to take care of my family, you know? So they just can't get upset about that. So if they ask you to redo it, absolutely redo it with that new information. Hey, Jeff, um, for anyone curious about what's going on with UX for the rest of 2022 at G, my sourcer told me that it's very hard to tell at this point, just far fewer roles available than normal. That sounds right. But she also said G continues backfilling roles, new deadlines, et cetera. More headcount will come available for more roles. It may just take more time to start seeing opportunities. I don't know what that means exactly, but that's the update for UX positions. Feeling deflated right now, it really sucks having passed the portfolio review only to get stuck in team match. At this rate, I'm worried you won't find a team of interest before next August when portfolio feedback expires, will you have to go through this again? So yeah, if you don't get a role by next August and you wanna still get in, you're gonna to have to do it again. That's correct. Um, everything is a case by case basis and it's not like attrition isn't still happening, right? Backfills still need to happen, but it's case by case. We did hear one piece of feedback that they're gonna prioritize UX hiring. I think it's L5 and above in the Bay, but even that is really fuzzy information, right? Everything is on a need basis and so there's not one role that i believe they're going to hire a ton for this year how at risk do you think google is of doing layoffs particularly for roles that have been reprioritized i think they care a lot about their brand but i just don't want to state any advice i, I just don't know 
Um, with the current economic landscape, it's possible that any company will do layoffs. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen next year, and and the un uncertainty seems to increase every single day. So, yeah, I, I just I don't want to say that they're not going to do it because we're in we're in a new time. Every single time there's inflation and recession and all this stuff, it's it's new every single time. There's some historical data and trends and all that stuff, but every single time, um, whether it's a one market or in this case, globally, um, it's going to look different every time. So I don't think that they can say blanket across the board that they won't have layoffs. It's always possible. All right, Raul, what do, we, what do you got for us? Raul is our data person. Um, and if you want to get great data, join that Slack group. Uh, data point, upon the completion of reprioritization of roles, the orgs at Google will have to secure approval on headcount against prioritized roles. Reprioritization might not be the end game. Yeah, so this was what I was kind of alluding to earlier on. Um, look, this is... I don't agree with this approach. Uh, they could have drawn a line in the sand. It would have upset a lot of people, but it would have just moved everything forward. And ultimately, I think it would have been much better for the business. I'm not a big wig. I don't make those decisions. I'm just a small YouTube creator uh, and, and just grateful for this community, right? But I just think all of this, the steps, the steps, the steps, it's, it's actually hurting their brand. Um, and I think a lot of these companies are hurting their brand with how they're acting now and thinking that the brand will just carry them. Um, and even today, you know, I had to put four organizations on blast uh, today, Google, Meta, Microsoft, and Amazon all did some real bad behavior this week with my clients. And I just, it's just unbelievable how they're treating candidates. And I think that this is going to start to show up more and more if they don't fix it. It's going to be really bad. And I think that there needs to be some accountability here. And if, I've really, uh, you know, we need to just take a moment to talk about it. I, I've tried to maybe play it a little too safe and maybe not have as strong of a voice. And I think I'm not going to do that anymore. Um, I think that if we're not holding these organizations accountable for having good behavior, like it's important. And yeah, of course, they can set the tone and, and talk about reprioritization, all this stuff. But um, things are slow. And you as a community, you as candidates aren't hearing back in a timely manner. It's not like there's a ton of work going on here. Like recruiters have less work to do. So again, I'm, it's just been today was to see some of the data and feedback uh, through the Slack group of things that are going on. And it's been a, a little bit frustrating, obviously. If a sourcer is supposed to proactively send profiles to hiring teams, shouldn't they be in the know for the open roles before I see them on the careers page. Seems odd to have to reach out to them first. Yep, they should be in the know, that's correct. Good morning. I made it to team match and then my role got deprioritized. The recruiter is optimistic, he'll get me in eventually. Any advice? All you can do is stay in touch and create that cadence with your recruiter. Ask them if you should be touching base once a week, bi-weekly, monthly, etc. That's the best piece of advice I can give you. I recently had a team match call after weeks of ghosting. It was okay, but not perfect. Do you recommend I should join and wait until I can change teams internally or hope for next team matches? Okay, so I just want to take a like a real quick pause here. I, I do have specific advice here, but it, it, it's really unique and individual to you. You're not going to get a lot of team matches. It's just not gonna happen. There are gonna be very, very few opportunities to team match, especially now. My strong recommendation is if you match with a team and it's good enough, just take the role. Especially if you think it's gonna pay better, it's gonna be better for your overall career perspectives. Now, if you really did not like that manager, no, I don't want you to join a team where you didn't like the manager going in. The manager relationship is more important than anything else, but there aren't gonna be a lot of team match calls for anybody. It's like we're not hearing of people getting more than one or two tops is what we're kind of seeing. So I do recommend you move forward. But again, there's there's so many factors to take in uh, take into consideration here. So but that's just my two cents. Uh, 
comp expectations for L4 product strategy ops in Mountain View. So product strategy and ops falls in as non-tech and does not fall in the same area as like straight product. 250, um, you know, 250 year one, maybe a little higher. I'd be anchoring in the high twos to low threes. Uh, the GCP non-tech role you had applied was removed from the G Careers page two weeks ago and put back up three days. What do I make of it? It is insanity with these posts going up and down. The role isn't available. It's, it is available. Just stay in touch with your recruiter. Yeah, that the role's going up and down and saying there's no position, but then it's up on the careers page. It's just, it's just been pure insanity um, with what how they're pulling putting up pulling down putting back up job posts it's just been there is no rhyme or reason and so you just got to stay in touch with your recruiter that's all you can do how long does it take for recruiters at meta to send your offer or results all right so they're not going to send you a direct offer but basically you should hear back in a week um, Meta usually moves a tiny bit faster, but if you haven't heard back, if it's been five business days, reach out, but they're not going to just go interview straight to offer. Meta has been incredibly challenging when it comes to offers. They're basically not moving unless you have data. Now, if you push back like a hundred times, which is what I'm doing with my negotiation clients, we can move the needle a little bit. We'll just pull all sorts of data from all sorts of places and just push back, push back, push back, and we'll be able to move the needle a little bit. But um, their negotiations are not going well, and they are paying way under market in comparison to what they used to pay. Just a couple data points for the audience. Hey, hi, Jeff. To change jobs and current circumstances, considering new people are most likely to be laid off. Yep, I, I, hopefully I addressed that um, in my last answer. So um, risk versus reward, there's all sorts of factors, uh, but there could be layoffs, absolutely, at any company. We just can't say across the board that there won't be layoffs. There always could be. What is your opinion on Google as a company? In particular, where they're headed. I know some employees who leave and complain it's not what it used to be. Uh, just wondering if you have some thoughts. Okay, so, all right, yeah, let's get into it. So the reality is, is that when we talk about the Googles, Metas, Amazons, Microsofts, these really elite premier companies, the reason why they're so beneficial is because, first of all, you're going to learn a ton. Second of all, you're going to get great comp. And third is the brand. The power of the brand is probably the most important. So even if you don't love working at Google, you don't love Google as an organization, what that brand does for you in your career is priceless. Okay. And look at me. I mean, I think people know I left Google. We're, we're approaching five years ago. I, I'm still building off that brand that's not going to be for forever and we can talk more about that as lives come up and, and what's going on with the business and all that stuff but we'll leave that aside for right now but i do think that these opportunities are good is google the same organization they were 10 years ago no way no way these companies as they get bigger they're going to have more process more process more process more red tape um, they're going to have people come in and, and really fine tune things. And I can tell you at Google, when Ruth came in as CFO, things changed. I was there before her and while she was there and you could feel the tightening of the strings in terms of all the free stuff we got and all that. Um, but the perks, the comp, what you'll learn, all that stuff, I still think it is valuable. But you're looking at really the big picture. You don't have to stay there for forever. Look at it as the overall opportunity and to have that brand in your background. That's where you're really going to get value. I hope that helps. And I think, you know, again, I'm I'm trying to come in here and be like super, super honest, uh, you know, and and it's just been, yeah, it's been really, really challenging for people because because of the accountability piece. I think that's been the toughest part. Like there hasn't been a lot of accountability on you know, how the behavior has been coming out of some of these organizations during these freezes and just like more graciousness and kindness and empathy. It's really been missing. It's not across the board, right? It's just in, in some cases, but I, I just would like to see more of that coming from these organizations, including Google. Hi, Jeff. Thanks for all your content. Do you have any idea business side review after HC? 
I heard that from my recruiter. She said it's a new process. Uh, well, um, it should be either HC or offer review, business side review. Um, I've not heard that specific language ever. So I can't be really helpful there, sorry. Uh, I had a Google recruiter reach out to have me involved in batch recruiting process where they look to intake a large number of candidates for multiple PM roles within GTEC. Okay. Evan, I'm just going to scroll down, see if there's any additional here. It doesn't look like there's any additional data here. So, yeah. Uh, look, I, I love batch days. I think batch days are great. If anybody's here and not familiar, Batch days are exactly that. And, and obviously, this was a lot trickier when on sites were in person. You had to manage a lot of conference rooms. You had to manage a lot of moving pieces. Doing it virtually is very, very easy. The thing about batch days is you usually get feedback much quicker. They make much quicker decisions. And it's because they need to do some sort of push for some hiring in a certain area. Um, it's usually done for software engineering typically, but I've seen it done for other areas, in this case, PM. So. Um, it's a great opportunity. You're gonna get results and data much quicker. So that's good, the good news. Um, I hope that helps. Uh, is there any office more likely to have future openings than others? Yeah, the two offices that will have more openings than any will be any Bay Area offices or any New York offices. Simply put, they're just doing more hiring than any other offices in the world. That's the only reason why. Good morning, I got an update from Cloud Migration Consultant. Roles in India are closed for this year. They said new roles have opened related to code optimization, et cetera. All right, Rajesh, thank you for that. Um, yeah, I mean, again, would they not hire a Cloud Migration Consultant? If there was a specific need, I think they would, but it sounds like those roles in general have been deprioritized. You're already in the HC stage for that role. Can you please suggest if you need to attend another role or technical rounds what if I fail? Um, well, okay, so a couple couple different places to go. Um, the other roles that you might interview for that you could get in front of, uh, it's really going to be role specific. You're not going to fail. You're going to do great because, again, we got to build that mindset. We are not future planning to fail. And we're, we, we're all weird because we're humans, and we create these mental pictures of failure or challenges in the future and we're just putting stress on ourselves and creating this kind of poor mental mindset. And this isn't just about you, Rajesh. This is just like in general, we all do this kind of stuff. And so when you're successful in the future, you're going to have opportunities to explore other roles. If those interviews didn't go perfect, you still have the good feedback to carry you over. You're still going to have future opportunities based on that good feedback. So um, I don't want you to worry too much about that. And I want you to plan for success, OK? Jeff, your voice and video, oh, is not in sync today. Okay, um, wow. Uh, I'm just kind of like looking at myself. Um, if anybody else can give me feedback. So in order to not have glitches, I'm hardwired in. So if that's the case, um, it's really disappointing. Can other people please come in and just comment on that? and tell me if it's like, if there's a mismatch, because it's really hard to watch if there's a mismatch. Please let me know. Thank you so much. Um, okay, so, okay, but anyways, good to see you. I saw commenting on the jobs removal post graph on LinkedIn, though they added a couple but removed major thoughts yet. I just think that this is gonna go up and down. Um, I don't know what they're doing with the job post. It's just, again, it's just been wildly inconsistent and I just can't. There's no method to the madness, um, but please, anybody else, let me know if we're, if we're having like real challenges here. I'm really sorry about that. The Wi-Fi in this office is not great, so I've been hardwiring in to overcome that, but I want to know if the hardwire is also not working. Hi, Jeff. Heard your answer to this question before, but need clarity. Still, if you can break down the total comp package and what's included. Um, what's typically included? A recruiter was trying to sell me on and a year bonus in my salary package. Some places I see base equity sign on, but the end of year bonus target is typically included also. Level seems to only have three data points. Yeah, the levels data is a little skewed. So like if you're going in for, um, I, I think, 
Well, it depends on the company you're talking about, but if we're talking about Google, it's base bonus, equity, and potentially a sign-on bonus. Now, a bonus at a company like Google, like L3, L4, L5, 15%, L6, 20%, L7, 25%. So if you just meet expectations, you're going to get at least that number. And that's why they build that in to the offers. Now, anybody getting offers now, I mean, everything's going to be prorated, right? So you just got to deal with the prorated piece, but they, the bonuses do pay out in full. So they do build them into the offers. I hope that helps. Let me know um, if you have more questions. At the 30s, quick prompt. Just today, the offer code NICE, N-I-C-E, gets you $100 off of our interview mastery course. We're getting so much positive feedback on that course. There's over 50 templates you can use to really help you put together all your answers. I do interview coaching and negotiation coaching. That's all at practiceinterviews.com. We have a Slack group. It's free. Our community is 3,500 people. People are asking questions and answering for each other on a daily basis. People are practicing with each other for free. Join our Slack group. And there's nine free resources on the website, nine free resources on the website that you can utilize as well, um, all of which I think are super, super helpful. Uh, if you like what we're doing today, smash that like button. And if you've never subscribed, consider subscribing as well. Uh, I go live every Wednesday, 10 a.m. Pacific, and new content every other Tuesday. Your L5 HC approved in June. Recruiter is saying they still don't have visibility on my role yet. You've heard that the HC approval lasts for a year. My question is what will happen if one year passes? If one year passes, you got to do it over. Okay. Um, the feedback's good for a year. That's all that they'll give you. So um, continue to push and hopefully they can move forward. Okay. Right now I work for healthcare as a senior DevOps eng. I got an offer product-based company. I put down my papers and present company offered me promotion and 15% hike as a retention, but there's a hundred K difference in pay compared to the new offer. New offer is senior role, but 100K more pay, whereas present company offered me principal. With the present market conditions, what are your thoughts? Um, for a prom put down me a promotion. Put down your papers and your present company offered you a promotion and 15% hike as retention. Well, if the new company is paying 100K, is there risk of layoffs? Yeah, absolutely. I think this is what you're saying. Um, I don't like when we go in and we take a counter offer from our current company. You're only paying me because I'm walking out the door. Titles don't matter. I don't believe in them. Um, I think that I care about compensation only. Titles or ego. This is just my opinion. I know some people don't agree with it. You go where you get paid more. Is there a risk of being first in, first out? With layoffs, there's always that piece, but I just, I'm going to take more money. If it's 100K more, I'm going to take it. Um, so uh, if I didn't answer your question, uh, let me know. Can Google rescind an offer? Heard horror stories of people resigning from their jobs to get their offers rescinded. The candidate is left without employment insurance and a job. Uh, I haven't seen Google do this once. There's not a specific single case study that I've seen of Google doing this. Um, they would all, I only saw one offer rescinded in my entire time there, and I haven't heard of one since, but it was because um, information came back in the background that was a lie. Um, so it would have to be something really, really glaring. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, how should I think about anchoring on a base for uh, L4 CE ML specialization in Sunnyvale? I know Sunnyvale is a premium market, but does ML get a premium as well? How do I go about research? Um, so. CEs are getting, I, I just don't want you to worry about the base. I don't really give base amounts because they're, whatever the base is, it's not going to be what you want it to be. But the total comp for CEs um, with an ML specialization, which will matter, um, is going to be pretty high. I mean, you should definitely be making, you know, well into, I mean, you should be making into the 300s. I would be anchoring, you know, maybe in the high threes to low fours for this position. Um, but you're focused in on total comp. And when you anchor, my year one expectation is 387,500. Okay, so we're really anchoring on a year one expectation. But CEs get paid well. Sunnyvale is considered a premium plus market. There's only two premium plus markets in the US, Bay Area and New York. I hope that helps. 
Yeah, don't, uh, I mean, it's a CE role. So you're going to get paid 90, 90% ish of what a SWE would make. And there's tons of data. So it's tons of data on SWEs. Cup expectations, GCP 10, L4 Toronto. Uh, year one, uh, 225 total comp, 220 total comp, 220 to 230 total comp. So I'd be anchoring in like the 270s, 280s. GCP security specialist filled my packet in July and was told it would be shared with HC. 70 days later, I got an update yesterday that we have the head count and Okay, we have the head count. Okay, <laughs> Jason, I'm not seeing another message. So we have the head count. Sounds great. Uh, but if you have any questions, please come back. Let me know. Uh, everyone in the live, join the Slack community for insider news, data, and much more. You'll find gems that are only available on the Slack channel. Don't miss it. I can't say this enough. And Raul is like our amazing um, data person who is dropping, dropping dimes. Does that make sense? Is that a term? Um, but dropping fantastic information, our Slack community, look, it's free, right? So, I mean, there's no reason not to sign up. Um, and it's just, I love the questions because people are almost always facing similar issues. And that's why I love the Slack group. And, and you'll see, I'm not in there very often. I'm, I'm in there once to twice a week. Um, so the community really holds each other up when I don't always have the time to get back to people. So, um, and I'm pretty upfront about that. I'm not in there a ton because I want it to be a community-based platform. So it's great. So thanks for that. How does relocation typically work at Google? I'm assuming you're expected to be on site by your start date. Yeah, so everything's hybrid, right? So you'd probably be in the office two to three days a week if you choose to do that and take that reload. Um, what the orientation looks like, I think they're still doing uh, remote orientation. So I'm not 100% sure on that. Uh, but... Yeah, you got to be there by your start date and relocation. So um, a lot of these companies, they do like a point system or like a pick and choose system or you can get a lump sum. The lump sum is taxed. Take what the company is offering you as a relocation package. It's a way, way better choice, in my opinion. Um, if you're doing it with Google, um, I do like the temp housing if you're going to a premium or premium plus market because the temp housing can help you decide where you want to live. Um, kind of explore around and usually with these high rents, um, high mortgages, it can be a good bang for your buck. Uh, comp expectations for integration support engineer, uh, what, le what level? Is the recruiter strict with six months rule? Uh, past HC, my recruiter said for me to contact him in six months, but I saw the same posting three months and contacted him, but no response from him. Yeah, I would, you know, maybe go go monthly. I know that that's not great. Um, contact you in six months. A lot happens in six months. But, you know, I would maybe go monthly and see see how that goes. Okay. I hope that helps. Voice and video is in sync. Okay. In sync. Awesome. Sync. Perfect. All good. In sync. It's fine. Perfect. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, I've just been playing around because we had some issues with the Wi-Fi um, in my office. I moved offices. I'm in a co-working space. Um, so I moved offices and the Wi-Fi was tricky. So I was hiccuping. So I went home and now I'm back. So I'm hardwiring in and a lot of data that you guys don't need. Uh, but but I hope it I hope it's coming through clear because I'm hardwired in. So I know hardwire still has like a couple of hiccups, but um, hopefully it overcomes some of the challenges we've had. Starting at Google, October 24th, L3 Tech Writer, 185 in comp. Your help has been invaluable, and I always recommend your channel to friends. David, congrats. It's nice to hear these stories. We are not getting a lot of them these days, so congrats. I think uh, 185 in total comp, uh, L3 Tech Writer, year one. That's good. Yeah, I, 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 you know, I would want you to get into the high ones, so that's, that's awesome. Um, and what I tell anybody, people come to me and they're like, can I buy you a gift? Or like, I appreciate you so much. So the only appreciation you can give me is spread the word. If you like what we're doing here, just tell other people. That's all you can do for me. That helps me more than anything else. So thank you so much. Congrats and, and wish you the best of luck. 
Hey Jeff, what are the comp expectations L3, WSE, and DC in New York? I know New York would be more based on market, but not sure of the exact numbers. Um, web solutions engineer, uh, DC year one, 170 ish, uh, you know, in New York higher, maybe 165, 170, and then New York would be kind of 185 to 195, maybe up to, maybe up to 200. Um, those are year one numbers, so it means you need to anchor higher for both. Um, now, DC, the cost of living is high, but the cost of labor is lower, probably 15% less than New York. Okay, so we're good, good, in sync. Okay, good, good, awesome. I got an offer to start as an L4 suite in GCP, October 24th, 309, year one, Seattle. Thanks so much for your guidance and Googliness and leadership interview. Yes, we're getting a few or a couple of good pieces of data. Thank you so much, Andrew. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Into the threes for year one in Seattle for an L4 suite. This is exactly where I would want you to be. Um, so those are good numbers. Um, congrats. Crush it. Uh, love Seattle. Such a such a great city. Such a fun market. Uh, hey, Jeff, can you please share what appalling behavior do candidates have to face from the big four recruiters and interviews? Um, so it's really been, um, all right, yeah, I'll get into it a little bit without, I'm not going to share any total specifics, but, you know, the level of ghosting is just like, it, it's unbelievable. It is, don't give your recruiters any credit. It is so easy to be organized. It's just they don't have a system and process to be organized. You could get back to every single candidate that you had in the process in under an hour once a week if you blocked out that time on Friday and just dedicated that time. The systems are set. G Hire, that ATS system, and any of the ATS systems used at these premier companies can run reports. Like It's just very, very easy. And how do I know? Because I did it for five years. And I always got back to my candidates in a timely manner. And maybe, yeah, in that first quarter, I was learning my lessons. But after that, I set the system and I followed it, right? So it's very easy. Um, some of the more appalling behavior, like the ghosting just drives me crazy. Obviously, <laughs> you've seen that because um, it, it's just the reason why the ghosting upsets me so much is because recruiters are getting paid like executives in almost every market. They get paid obnoxious amounts of money. And so to hear the excuses and complaints and like blaming it on anything else, it's just, it's all excuses, right? So that, that I've seen a lot of that. Um, so in the Slack community, one person highlighted um, that, and I, I won't say where, but you can join the Slack group and see it. Um, one person, uh, their interviewer didn't provide feedback, just chose not to provide feedback. So the organization told them to do the interview again. How is that acceptable in any world? Like that to me was just totally appalling. That upset me so much. And on the negotiation end, I am seeing some horrible, horrible behavior. Ghosting at the negotiation phase, creating unrealistic and unbelievable ultimatums and deadlines. Um, we're seeing a lot of like, there's a line of candidates behind you. So if you don't want the offer, leave. And so all this bad behavior that's happening in the negotiation phase, this is when recruiters should be the nicest. They have tough hiring goals. And to just absolutely ignore candidates in this part of the process, to tell them that there's a line of candidates, to tell them that they can't negotiate, it's it's just unbelievable. So I, I'm, I'm seeing it at all facets. I just am frustrated. Obviously, I think everybody can tell. Like I... This community knows I'm positive, but the bad behavior, it, it's its these organizations' fault for not putting the systems and processes in place, and they're not auditing. There's no audit. So there's no audit. Look, if I went in, I could just hire one person to just look at every recruiter across the organization, get into their ATS, and look at the email chains, because these ATSs 
capture all the email chains and to see these candidates come in and say, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? And not see them getting back. See all this bad behavior. It's a systems and process issue. And the fact that these large organizations that have too much systems and process haven't put it in here is ridiculous. And then interviewer accountability. I think everybody knows I'm talking more and more about this. Um, and I'll tell you guys more, but this is part of my new business model that I'm going to be working on. There's no accountability. Interviewers are not held accountable if they don't turn their cameras on, if they don't show up, if they interrupt, if they're annoying, if they're hungover, if they're not paying attention, whatever it might be. And if interviewers aren't held accountable, they are literally determining whether you get the job or not because they don't have to show up because they're never being held accountable. They don't care. And the lack of caring, the lack of empathy is what I've just been struggling with a lot lately and I was definitely struggling with it this morning and I put these organizations on blast on LinkedIn and we'll see how that shows up. We'll see how that ends up. Um, um, yeah, how bad it can get. Yeah, and, and it's just, yeah, there's, there's a lot of people facing the same thing and that's kind of what we're here for and that's what the Slack community is there for. It's a support group. And so people can support each other um, and because sometimes it's just nice to hear that it's not just happening to you. And I know that doesn't make it that much better, but it's, it's just nice to have that support. You're welcome. Uh, any idea in an anchor for an L6 PM role in Mountain View? Yeah, uh, I would anchor in the 640s for an L6 PM role. Uh, maybe higher if you want. If we're talking product manager, yeah, a product manager, uh, year one, I want you to make about 600. Product managers make what software engineers are making. So I would go I would go really, really big if you can. Um, what is the compensation expectations for principal DevOps engineer and senior DevOps engineer in the present market? So um, I tell everybody the same thing. Uh, you have to give me more specificity. That's just way too open. I would need to know the market. I would need to know more specific levels. I need to know the organization. Um, it's just really tough for me to answer uh, questions that have that wide of a scope. Any comp expectations for Meta? Oh, L3. Meta integration support engineer. I don't know how they're paying these days. <sighs> integration support. I mean, I'd hope for you to get, um, you know, close to, close to 200. Um, you know, again, their their model's flat, so so it's kind of like a four-year expectation. So maybe a four-year average of around 200K would be anchoring into the 200s for sure. But it, it may be a little bit lower um, for integration engineers. And just remember, MED is not paying well lately. From what I've seen, engineering is its own beast. So engineering is always going to pay well. Integration support um how much coding you're doing will also depend on how much you get paid. I hope that helps. Just started to look for my first software engineering role. What's your best recommendations for preparing for interviews? Is like you have one coming up. Well, I mean, I want you to just use the, use the resources out there, right? Um, if it's your first software engineering role, maybe you're a little more on the junior end, so you should be using sources like Leak Code and Pramp and these other ones where you can practice with others. And then don't forget about the behavioral side. Um, every engineer is going to have to go through some form of a behavioral interview, so don't leave that piece aside as well. Any updates on CE roles from your clients, insiders at Google? Uh, I have one negotiation client uh, for a CE role that is moving forward, and all the others are not really moving forward at this time. Um, so, yeah, it's for CEs, it's going to be a slow role. Uh, I really think we're going to be looking at Q1 or Q2 of next year. Um, but so only one of my negotiation clients that hit that pause is moving forward. Okay, so yeah, I don't. It doesn't look great. Uh, GCP security specialist. One packet is filled that's shared with HC first or hiring manager. Or are there any caveats? Um, so a lot of it depends, right? Like sometimes there's a hiring manager from the beginning which means we meet with them, we interview with them, we go through the interviews, and then they decide to write that statement of support, take us to hiring committee. Sometimes hiring committee is passed over for just a straight offer review for more clear cut packets. Um, now, sometimes if it's a more generic role, then yeah, they would likely team match you before hiring committee. If your packet was really strong, they take you to hiring committee first. Um, but 
most of the time they want hiring manager support so that HC says, okay, this person, like they want to hire this person, we should hire them because they're giving more support with that statement of support. I hope that helps. Let me know if you need more data. Hi, Jeff. What is prorated with respect to comp? Um, you know, the only thing that would be prorate, there are two things that would be prorated with respect to comp with like any of these companies is your merit's going to be prorated. So instead of maybe a five, six, seven percent merit, maybe you get a one or two percent. And then absolutely your yearly bonus will be prorated based on days worked at the company. Well, sometimes recruiters ghost because they don't have all the information, but a no update update is better than nothing. Exactly. Right. Like, like they need to provide you with a no update update. The vast majority of my candidates, when they heard from me on a weekly basis was Sue, I don't have any data for you, but I'm uh, your top of mind for me. Have a great weekend. And just, I would do that because that at least shows empathy. It shows that you're in their shoes and it shows that like, you're thinking about them and then they don't have like this unknown gray area. So yeah, they ghost because they haven't been taught the systems and process. And the no update update is part of the process that I built for onboarding for recruiters at Google that they are still getting today. So they get that information at Google. They get that specific training about the no update update. So there, they're just not doing it. If team match call with HM goes well, does it typically move directly to HC or are there more interviews? Typically directly to HC on occasion, uh, you know, maybe like 20, 30% of the time. Sometimes they want you to maybe chat with a couple team members too. Take that as a positive. Go in. How can I be a great team member to you? What do you see as the best way I can collaborate and communicate with you to make the team move better? Like take it as a really positive sign, but usually it would be maybe meeting with team members. That's typically the only other stage. Some are overwhelmed by the number of candidates they're handling and unorganized, but they should go back to the candidate with something. The worst is interviewers not attending decision meetings. Okay. The recruiter is transactional candidate should look at the interview process the same way. It leads to less anxiety. Yeah. I mean, like you, when I recruited at Google, hands down, the, the highest number of candidates I had at one time is when I recruited software engineers for GCP, like just higher volume. Every one of those candidates in process still heard from me every single week because I had a system in place and it's a very simplistic system. Block off a time on Friday and everybody hears from you before the weekend, period. It's a very, very simple strategy. And if it takes 25 minutes, one hour, two hours, I would never end my Friday until that was done. That was my rule. And sometimes I was done at 3 p.m. Sometimes it was 9 p.m., but I never ended my day without taking that step. And that was my rule. And I knew that and my wife knew that. And that was just our that was just our practice. That was just our policy. Like, hey, this is this is the one piece that I need to make sure I get right every single week. And I got it right every single week. And I would just never stop working until every single person had heard from me. Hey, Jeff, at my final interview, August 2nd, and HR told me you passed on August 22nd. Then no updates after that. From your video, I assume it's under hiring committee phase, but I really wonder. Yeah, I can't tell you why it's taking so long. So again, if you haven't heard back and you've reached out four, three, four, five times and you haven't heard back, we are going to try candidate dash interview dash support at google.com and apparently that's a poke at google recruiters to respond to we're going to see we're going to we're going to start testing that data quite a bit okay so um let's test it let's test it let's see if that works to get people to respond but if you haven't heard make sure you're definitely being proactive in your reach outs as well Done with my interviews at Google. Recruiter is looking for teams to recommend me. It's been more than two weeks and you haven't heard anything. Is this ideal to take so much time? You, this two weeks is nothing. Um, you know, people are being in the team match for months at a time. So two weeks is, even in a, even when things are perfect, no hiring freezes, two weeks is not uncommon. Okay. So uh, just stay patient, stay in touch with your recruiter, but two weeks is, is going to be 
very, very common given uh, the current landscape. Uh, some not so good news, Meta Employee on Blind, Meta started touch points, sorry, touch points for October. The slaughter is coming. Touch point equals pre-pit planning, HR documentation for firings. Okay, thanks, Raul. So again, our data guru right here, teamblind.com. I mean, in like I love levels, obviously, dot FYI for just the comp info, and that's gonna be our source. There's also good comp info on Team Blind, but if you just want a pulse on what's going on, uh, the comments of people's stuff is not always as great, but just the initial comments, the initial data that's put out there can be pretty good. And I don't know, everything I'm seeing, I believe Meta will start having some layoffs. Uh, but I, I, again, I, this is just personal, just what I'm seeing. Um, I can't say for sure. Keep looking, thanks for that. Uh, sorry for the confusion, PM meant program manager. Okay, it looks like the title solutions consultant, but the job description is all program management. Okay, so um, solutions consultant is the role, okay? So we can't anchor on roles that we want it to be. It's not a program manager role, it's a solutions consultant role and just um, this is just helpful for the audience, like in the world out there, PM, product manager, PGM, program manager. Are you supposed to know that? Absolutely not. Um, so L6 program manager, we're going to, sorry, have to reset expectations down quite a bit. I mean, an L6 program manager um, in Mountain View, year one, you know, I'd be hoping that you'd be getting in you definitely be getting into like the low fours, maybe up to mid fours. So you still want to be anchoring probably high fours, low fives. I hope that helps. Um, but it's definitely a, well, actually it's a solutions consultant role, but solutions consultant and program manager, they're essentially going to pay the same. Hi, Jeff, received the following response from my recruiter. What would be the interpretation of it on next steps? Okay. Um, okay, so, all right, I think we need to, Let's, let's go here. I think they flipped. So none of our UXR positions have been prioritized for the current year. Having said that, I'll retain your feedback and definitely reach out in the future. Okay. So if you get a position of TPM at Google, you're from Chile, and the team is working at a split start, you know how much time this is. Oh, I'm, I'm super sorry. I popped between two comments. Sorry about that. Um, so... Okay, so we're going back here, sorry. Um, interpretation, so yeah, so basically they're saying there's no positions, they're probably gonna close out your application. I would just respond with what's what's the cadence? Can I touch base with you every one month, every three months? Just find that cadence so you still have a point of contact there. Um, that's gonna be your best next step, unfortunately. Okay, so <clears throat> you get a possession position in TPM and you're from Chile, the team is working on a split start. Um, split start is going to be uh, really specific to you. Um, this could be a sponsorship item, so it could be based on sponsorship. So what the split start means, you got to negotiate as much as you can for the best offer to start, especially from an equity standpoint, because that equity is not going to change. What is going to change is the base salary, depending on where you move to, it will go up or down depending on the cost of living, but that's what they do. They, they'll give you an initial salary and they'll say, here's the salary here. And then when you move, the salary is going to be here. But the time is usually about six months, but it, it really varies depending on a lot of different factors. So if you have more data for us, please let us know. Is it common to pass HC before a team matches a SWE? Uh, SWE is probably one of the areas where it's going to be more common than other roles. So, if I had a slam dunk software engineer that I brought through the process, they basically got hires across the board. I'm not going to wait to find them a team match. I'm going to take them to HC, say, look, Jane got five hire recommendations. Let's hire her. I'm going to get her through HC. And then I'm going to go into the team match and say, I have Jane. She's HC approved. Hiring managers love that. There's less risk. So, um, and it's going to be a much more clear cut packet. Whereas sometimes, you'll get into the team match stage and you're like a borderline candidate. And that may be one of the reasons why you're not getting team matches. I hope that helps. 
We wrote reports that GCP is not doing good, but there are openings for cloud suite roles even after reprioritization. Is this a good time to consider it? Um, I, I don't know. I feel like GCP is having some internal struggles, but I, I think I'm super biased with GCP, so I'm the wrong person to ask because I, I, I think a lot of the tools that they're utilizing for GCP are great. Um, I think when it comes to data, they're cutting edge. They have obviously some of the best engineers in the world. So I think the opportunity and long-term perspective for GCP, especially because you're talking about a company that's based in data and infrastructure is really, really strong, but I'm biased. Um, I mean, I, I would consider it. Uh, but again, I, I want you to factor in everything, take data from all the sources, because I, I, I am a GCP fan. Um, so that's my two cents. On the half hours, I'm just going to pop in. If you use the coupon code NICE, N-I-C-E, 100 bucks off of our interview mastery course, just till 11.59 uh, p.m. Pacific time today. Getting so much good feedback and want to give you that opportunity this Wednesday. Um, we do interview coaching. We obviously do negotiation coaching, um, getting great results for our clients. Join our Slack group. We have nine free resources on our website, um, which are really, really helpful. You like what we're doing today smash that like button if you've never subscribed consider subscribing just want to say thank you for all your content and advice you received a verbal offer for a dct role data center technician role at google canada about an hour ago in large part due to your channel okay amazing um definitely make sure you negotiate right um just really push the envelope on the negotiations um congrats thanks for letting us know Hi, Jeff. I'm also a recent boot camp grad and looking to find my first role at AWS Google in a larger corp. Do you have any suggestions on how to find those entry level positions and titles? Yeah, I mean, you can search online. Look, I'm a big fan of networking. I think networking is a little tougher as a new grad um, or a new grad at boot camp. Uh, I think that a lot of people try to connect with recruiters. My much stronger recommendation is to connect with people in like roles, people who seem to be in a hiring position in these companies, that's the better strategy. If you're gonna network, give first, right? Share cool articles, cool videos, don't ask. 99% of people say, get me a job, give me a job. And by the way, I still get a ton of that. I get a ton of people saying, here's my background, Jeff, find me a job at Google. I don't work at Google. I can't find them a job. I won't refer them a job, right? And and this is how a lot of people reach out. It's not a good approach. Um, it doesn't work. So be a little bit more creative in your networking, and that's a great way to do it. I hope that helps. Um, how many gap for salary? How how much gap for salary U.S. and Japan? L4 TAM for GCP. In case I don't have any competitive comp, can I negotiate? To be efficient, should I negotiate on sign-on or equity? The best thing to negotiate on always is equity. You want to push that equity number up. So here's what you do. TAMs are getting paid 70% of what software engineers are getting paid. Levels.fyi is going to have great data on L4 software engineers in your market. Take the last five or 10 that were hired as an L4, find that average. That's likely your anchor. Okay, but you're going to make 70% of what Swedes make. You always got to go based off software engineer data because there's a ton of it. But there's not a lot of TAM data, but TAMs are making 70% of what Swedes make pretty much across the board. Absolutely. Can recruiters look for multiple types of roles for one person and they locked into one role? They're locked into probably a, a role category like software engineer, product manager, program manager, marketing manager, whatever it might be. Um, they're not working across all these different types of roles. They're all going to be in the same wheelhouse, right? Um, so they could stretch. They could be different roles. Like my last job at Google, I hired um, technical solutions engineers, technical solutions consultants, web solution engineers, but they're all kind of like client-facing engineering, so they were still all in the same group. I hope that helps. Okay, yeah, there's not much data about G in Japan. Yeah, I mean, take the software engineering data. That's where we almost always have data. Is there any way to negotiate to be remote? 
after relocation was discussed during the interview process. Um, you can always discuss remote, just make sure that like you pass everything, they love you, they wanna hire you, then bring it up. And you gotta bring it up kind of before comp because that's gonna dictate how much comp you're gonna make. But we think about location, we think maybe we won't move for the job. We get them to love us, and then sometimes they're more open to hiring us remote. Okay, so we're coming back to this question, um, but it's still missing a critical data point on uh, the compensation expectations for principal DevOps engineer and senior DevOps L3, L4 in present market in California, Texas, and New York areas. So I think if you've been on any of my lives before, uh, this is just too much. Um, I really like when people come in, they can focus in on one market, one level, and one company. Because I'm just going to be sitting here going through all the data in my mind and trying to figure all this out for all these markets. And in Texas and California, there's multiple markets that they hire for. It's just too much. So if there's really a target market, target company, and target level, I could be much, much more helpful. Okay. I'm in the team match phase for L6 Eng Manager. This week is hiring committee review for me. If it goes well, okay, you're based in Chicago, L6, you're in hiring committee. So Google L6 Eng Manager, Chicago, um, Chicago. I mean, you would definitely want to make into the fives, I would think. Um, maybe higher, maybe 550. Uh, you're going to really want to look at the data as much as you can. I mean, in terms of anchoring, I would probably definitely be anchoring in the sixes. Um, but I would think, yeah, I would think maybe low to mid fives is definitely reasonable for year one. I, I'm not, those numbers aren't perfect. I think they should be relatively close. My recruiter is saying I'm being offered the max available. They're sending the official offer in one to two days. I think I should still push for more. I don't feel like they'd offer me the max right away. They, they definitely won't. Come back and tell us what company it is. Uh, they rarely come in with their best offers to start. Are, L, are SWE L3 roles still deprioritized? You saw a couple of postings on the career page. Yeah, so I think overall, SWE L3, L4, they're, they're, they're going to hire less of those roles. But are they going to still have L3, L4 needs? Absolutely. So they're still going to hire for those roles. I would still expect job posts or, uh, yeah, uh, job job posts. Why does that sound funny? <laughs> I'm losing my mind. Um, I would still expect job posts uh, on those, but it's just going to be less. Okay. I'm interviewing for an L5 role with seven years of experience. Can I be downgraded to L4 if the interview doesn't go well or if or is it a rejection that I should expect? Um, yeah, if you interview for an L5 with seven years of experience, could you be downgraded to L4? Yeah, but they're not going to downgrade you to L4 if the interview doesn't go well. They're going to downgrade you if they just say, hey, look, this is a higher, but we think they're a better fit at four. You're still going to do well for a four. They're not going to just bring you in at a five and say, okay, well, we're just the feedback wasn't good, so we'll down level four. Your feedback still needs to be strong across the board. They might just identify that four is a better way for you to come and set you up for success. Is that it's the DC role at Google? I received a verbal offer for Canada. Oh, yeah, just okay. So it is for Google. Okay, so um, just push back and say you say nice things like. I just want to say thank you so much. I appreciate it. Say, I think we're really close. If we can just get to X in equity, I would sign. Or if we can just add 5K to the base. So, you, I mean, they rarely, rarely lead with their best offer. So I would still try to negotiate. Just be super gracious and kind. Hey, Jeff, I didn't catch up with what you mentioned regarding something like Google. Okay. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Is it a website? I can check my application. No, you can't. So if you haven't heard back from your recruiters, try candidate dash interview dash support at google.com. 
And we had somebody in the Slack group try this. It worked. They instantly got a response from a recruiter that they hadn't heard from in months. So my best guess is if this email goes, it gets flagged to their manager or something. So I think we might have found a great loophole. Um, I'm super excited about it. I don't know for sure. I didn't I didn't go to any internal resources to find out more about it. It's just that's the data point we have. So we're going to roll with it and, and see what happens. <clears throat> All right. We're, uh, you know, this is, we, we have a smaller audience today. Uh, this is, welcome to the new world. Everything is slower um, these days, especially coming up in Q4. So now that we're at the end of questions, um, I'm just going to go into my quick wrap up. And then any additional questions for anybody who's still hanging out, I'll answer any final questions. If this is your first time here, my name is Jeff H. Seid. Please like and subscribe if you haven't. Um, I do interview coaching. I do negotiation coaching. And NICE, it's just good for today. N-I-C-E gets you $100 off of our interview mastery course, only available till 11.59 p.m. Pacific time today. I go live every Wednesday, 10 a.m. Pacific time, and I come out with new content every other Tuesday. If you ever have advice or suggestions on what I should produce, I'm always willing to take suggestions, whether it's in the Slack community, YouTube comments, LinkedIn, whatever it might be. I appreciate everybody. Uh, I know times are challenging, and I think you can see it in my pitch and tone that I am much like you. I'm feeling it. And I, you know, I've been, I think, uh, pretty candid that like my business has been crushed by what's happening, right? So, like, we're all feeling it. So we all just got to hang in there as long as we can and, and make decisions that we think are best for us to move forward. OK, um, I hope that's really helpful. I'm going to answer this last question and hop off. Memo candidate dash, dash interview dash support. Got it. Thank you so much. It's three Japan, but just would like to thank you for the live streaming. You've helped me a lot. Thanks for showing up. I know my I know the stream is not ideal for everybody, but I, I appreciate you being here. And I try that. Try that email. Uh, let us know. Okay. Yes, I <laughs> the thumbnail. I hope people like the thumbnails. Definitely comment on that uh, because I'm having so much fun with those. And yeah, I've been having so much fun with those. Absolutely. Uh, you're welcome. You look stressed. <laughs> Hardly smile these days. Um, things will fall into place. Thanks. Love from India. Absolutely. Not a question, but just your comment. The process is tough. Economy is tough. Be patient. Be positive. Thanks, Tina. Hey, Tina shows up in our Slack group from time to time. You know, she she went through the team match phase for an ABP in the bad times, right? Or sorry, in the good times. And that still took 11 months or 12 months. So it, it happens. Jeff, I passed the HC and moved to team matching L3 Suite in July this year. Followed up with my recruiter in September and he said, Things will pick up in January 1st. I think for an L3, um, I think that's this is this is going to be the likely thing. I think L3 and L4 sweet hiring will pick up early next year. Thank you for the work. Appreciate it. Fantastic thumbnail. Awesome. Thank you, everybody, so much for being here. I appreciate everybody in this community. And have a great day, okay?